Hi, I'm Sterling Johnson. I'm the principal investigator of the RAP study, which is the Wisconsin Registry for Alzheimer's Prevention. RAP is now in its 20th year, and uh, we're excited about where it came from and where it's going. I want to uh, especially acknowledge Mark Sager, the geriatrician who started this amazing study way back in 2001. It's come a long way, uh, and it's uh, largely thanks to Dr. Sager. When we first started, RAP was a family history study. Uh, we were enrolling people who had a parent with Alzheimer's disease. It soon became clear to us we needed a control group, and so we enrolled, enrolled people who didn't have a parent with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and around that same time, in, in the early 2000s, we started imaging in the RAP study, and that really helped us understand what was going on in the brain. One of the moments for me that I always remember from the study is the first information session we did with RAP. I remember seeing a, a packed room of, of participants wanting to know how the study was going and how we were doing. And it was just so great to connect with them on a personal level like that and to see what it is we're doing this study for. The participants in RAP are, are the key to this study. That's why it's been so successful. They're so willing and generous to volunteer they come in every two years. They go through all the, the testing and poking and prodding that we do. They're just so dedicated. I think that's, that's what inspires me the most is to see how dedicated they are and, and to know that they're pulling for us to succeed in finding uh, a cure to Alzheimer's disease and winning this battle, that, that's important to me. When a researcher anywhere on the, on the globe thinks about preclinical Alzheimer's disease, they think about the RAP study. I'm so proud of that, and I'm proud of our participants for making that happen. The biomarkers, the, the PET scans and the lumbar punctures are key to the future of, of RAP uh, because that is how we determine if a person has the, the, the beginnings of Alzheimer's disease. We will be doing more of that. If I had uh, my way as the study PI, I would ask all of our participants to have a PET scan or a lumbar puncture. Uh, and, and so many of them have already done it and uh, we hope that more will do it. And we're so gratified that the NIH has been giving us the funding and the resources we need to, to make all of that happen. It's, it's very true that in African-Americans, this disease is more prevalent and it's hitting that community harder than other communities. And we need to know why that is. We've had a dedicated group of African-Americans in the RAP study for many years, and we are always working to increase the diversity in the study. We wanna make the, the results, the findings of our study, generalizable to everybody. And that's a key fundamental goal for RAP. When I think about the future of RAP, I'm also thinking about the exciting new technology that's coming to us. Uh, the blood-based biomarkers are really important and we are excited to test those out and to see if they'll help us predict who will go on to get symptoms. We're also excited that the, the PET scanning capability and other imaging is getting more precise uh, and, and that's gonna help us be more accurate and, and make better prediction about who's gonna go on to symptoms and who isn't. The field is looking good. We, there's a lot of uh, uh, research findings that we've been a part of and there's a lot of new things that we want to try in the study that we think will help us.